Hello, this is Trevor Shedden from AppleNaps.com, and we have iOS 5 running on an iPad 1. Now let's take you through the nuances of how the iPad will run with the new OS coming this fall. As you can see here, this is complete wireless setup. There's no longer the white sync cable. You can restore from backup with via the cloud or from your computer if you want, or you can set up as a new iPad, which we'll do right now. We'll also skip uh, this step of registering an account. But as you can see, this is a complete up and running iOS 5 compatible iPad without one connection to a computer. You can use it right away. Speaking of using it, the biggest new addition is notifications. As you can see here, it pops up real subtly on the top, and you can jump right into the app that is notifying you. This app is the iMessage app, which is another new feature. It gives you text messaging, SMS messaging to the iPad and the iPod Touch, as well as to the iPhone. Back to notifications, here you can see a whole list of them, and it's just a swipe from the top of the screen. Now we'll go into Mail. With Mail, there's a couple new additions. The first is that you can have new additions in composing messages. After you set up your address, you can drag the address from the To field to the CC BCC field. And also there's new additions for when you're actually typing your message. Type something out, select the text, and then you have the option to add special font styling or indent further and stuff like that. Here, let's see. We'll select the text right here, and then you can see a whole new menus appear. We can have a bold, italicized, and underlined. We can also indent like a forward or a replied message. And there's the new universal dictionary in all apps. So right here we'll define this and you can see a whole definition of any word you're interested in. This is beyond just mail. Also there's the new keyboard editions. This is specifically for the iPad so you can split the keyboard in two and make it easier for thumb tapping if you're holding your iPad in portrait mode. Neat little addition. And then you can always send the keyboard back to the regular position. Also you can just swipe while in portrait mode to bring up the inbox and the outbox. You don't need to press the little button. Also there's the new newsstand, but you need an actual subscription. We just have the daily app without the paid subscription, so it doesn't go into newsstand. Now also let's check out the settings. Here's the iCloud settings already built into iOS 5. It's not completely activated, but these are what's going to be included in the iCloud and iOS 5. We'll turn on photo stream because a few things are included. Now we'll check out the storage and backup. We have 5 gigs still, but you can buy more storage, which is an interesting addition. It's not available till fall. Another new setting is Twitter. Twitter is built right into settings, and you can install the Twitter app, the official one, straight from the settings app. You don't need to go to the app store. Also, Twitter functionality is built into the stock apps, like Map, for example. You can tweet your location from within Maps. You don't need to open up Twitter or any separate application. You can tweet all from within specific stock apps. Now let's go back look at the notifications on the lock screen. As you can see, you can slide across the notification to launch straight into that app. That app that we just launched into is another new app. This is Reminders, which is Apple's new to-do system. So now you can create to-dos, and the to-dos will alert you based on time, but they can also alert you based on location, which is something new. So now you can be alerted when you arrive at a location or leave a location, and the locations can be your current location or you can pick a location from your contacts. The problem is you can't pick a location from maps so you actually have to have a built-in contact which you can access from the device or from the cloud but still contacts only. And that's reminders which will alert you to anything you could care about with lists, events, and such. Let's go back out to the home screen and check out Safari. Quite a few Safari enhancements iPad specific. The biggest is tabbed browsing. So now you don't need to open up the grid and go have separate windows. You can have multiple tabs within a window and you can switch back and forth practically instantaneously. It's a bit slower on the iPad 1 compared to the iPad 2, but you still get the idea of switching effortlessly between all your different tabs and loading multiple tabs at once so you don't have to wait for the page to open and then switch around. It's really a whole new way to use Safari, at least mobile Safari, and this is only on the iPad. Now also, then another new function is the reader function. You tap the reader, which is up in the address bar. We'll wait for this page to load. And 
you just tap the reader button and you get a whole new way to read your page rather than all the enhancements of the web page and all the CSS you just get your article completely uh, distraction free to read you can add to reading list reading list is an offline reading function so you it's like read it later instapaper you can read even when you don't have an internet connection that's safari now music was an odd enhancement or at least change the iPod is gone and now it's just the music app that's like on the iPod touch and it's a whole new iPad music playing interface not much has changed but it is definitely new and uh, all the same features it's just a different styling so here let's look more at the styling we're playing a song right here The next new enhancement is photos and cameras. So now you can edit photos, even though that's not available in this iOS 5 build. And also, there's the new camera function. This is iPad 1, not an iPad 2, but the same thing will be on iPad 2. So we'll do an iPod Touch example. You can start taking a picture from the lock screen. You open up the camera, and then you take the picture via the volume up button. And now we have the iPad, and Photo Stream, which is via the iCloud, is on. And the picture should pop up here in the photos. Let's wait for it. And there it is. The picture we just took on our iPod Touch is pushed automatically to our iPad to view on the iPad full screen. Another new feature is gestures. Right here, you just five finger to close out of an app, four finger to bring up the multitasking bar, and then once you're in an app, four finger swipe to the right or left switches between apps. This is gestures that is available beta right now and it's going to be full on in iOS 5. Game Center has received a bunch of small enhancements. The first is you can actually add a photo to your profile to personalize it a bit. So we don't really have much saved on the iPad. But you have the photo and then all your friends can view your photo. And also this helps for the new friends recommendations feature which lets you find new friends based on the friends you already have. It kind of connects you based on number of friends in common. Kind of like a Facebook style friend recommendation system. Also there's a new games recommendation system which is based on the games you already have in Game Center. So now you can find games like a genius suggestions list and then also you can buy games within Game Center. You don't need to go out to the App Store. There's a whole like App Store page but it's built within Game Center now. There is also a change to the achievement system so now the achievements rather than one achievement, it's worth the points the developers choose. So achievement that's worth 10 points, you get 10 points and you have a whole new points based system. Also, you can sort friends by points and you can compare your scores for each games you own together with friends to see the points comparison. And on any particular game, you can compare achievements of what you've earned and what a friend has earned. Here's a couple other features. The App Store and the iTunes Store now have a purchase tab which is available on iOS 4.3, silently updated, but it will be iOS 5 as well. And now you can find everything that you've purchased before and re-download it completely for free. To speak more on the wireless part, you can see software update option is included. It's not yet active. And there's also iTunes sync option, which again, lets you sync wirelessly and back up and update wirelessly. Also, there's a new tone store, which isn't on the iPad, but it's on the iPhone. So I'll show you that. But overall, this is going to be iOS 5 and the iPad. There will be a few changes as new builds come out as we approach this fall. But we hope you enjoyed our iPad iOS 5 walkthrough. This is Apple and Apps. Thanks for watching.